everyone, welcome to Online Bible Club for this week. My name's Liz and I'm here to tell you your story today. I'm really pleased you've been able to join me today. Now let's have a think about some of the things we've been learning over the last few weeks. We've been thinking about what Jesus told us in his Bible about what he, who he is. So we've learned that Jesus is the bread of life. Remember we need him every day in our lives. And we've learned that Jesus is the light of the world. That means his light shines in us and shows us the sin and the darkness in our life. But he also takes that away. Darkness has to run away when the light comes and he shows us our way to heaven. And then last week, we've learned that Jesus is the good shepherd. Now, a good shepherd always takes care of all his lambs and his sheep, even a lamb that's very tiny and not very well. Jesus cares for all his children, just like a good shepherd. Now today, we're gonna to learn that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Resurrection's a really long word. It's a really difficult word, but we're gonna look at that in the story. But life, you're alive, I'm alive, and we say thank you to God for that every day. Now I'm in a very strange place today, and we're just gonna pan around and have a quick look where we are, now, can you see where we are? Some people call this a graveyard or a churchyard or a cemetery. And all these stones show us where family members can come and remember people who are no longer living with us. These are people who have died. And perhaps for your family, someone in your family has died recently. And we send our love and our sympathy to you. And some people come here and are really sad. And we're going to learn a bit about that in our story again today, and that's fine. But what Jesus is telling us is, there is real hope here. Now, that's not the, oh, I hope it's going to be a nice day tomorrow type of hope. When Jesus tells us things, it's true, because Jesus is the Son of God. Now, we're going to have our song, and then our story will tell us more about what Jesus meant when he said those words. Our song today, Tammy's going to help us with it, is For God So Loved the World. I hope it's one that you can remember. And have a think about the chorus. There's four letters in the chorus. L-I-F-E. And those letters spell life. Enjoy the song and I'll see you later. Bye. So love the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not die but have eternal life. And it's for the love that he has for me, I am the reason he died on the tree. Death is for Did you know that song, um, children? Um, remember, it's Sunday Bible Club. We make our own um, cards up with those letters on. So I've made mine. That helped me remember the song. So you can do that at home as well if you want. Now, it's our story time now. So we're going to be looking at the Bible today to find out what God is going to tell us. Now, Jesus said, I am the... Now, can you remember that long word? Resurrection and the life. We're going to look at that and see what God is going to teach us with those two words. Now the story today is about a man called Lazarus and his two sisters Mary and Martha. Now the Bible tells us that they lived in a place called Bethany which is quite close to Jerusalem and we don't know lots about them but we know a few things. One of the things is they had lots of friends in Bethany, the little village they lived in, and they had friends too in Jerusalem. And one of the people who liked to come by their house often was Jesus. He would come sometimes just to talk to them 
and sometimes stop and have a meal. Now we also know something else about Martha. This is what she really loved to do. What do you think she was doing? Yes, she loved cooking and keeping house. And she wanted everything really nice. And when Jesus came once, she was so busy in the kitchen wanting everything nice that she forgot to listen to Jesus. So I hope today we don't forget to listen to what Jesus is going to tell us. Now Mary and Martha and Lazarus lived very happily together. But one morning, something really sad happened. I want you to think about it. Here's our picture for today. And we've got Lazarus here. Oh, he doesn't look very well, does he? Lazarus, in fact, was very sick. And we don't know which one is Mary or Martha, but they're trying to help Lazarus feel better. But they didn't have medicines like we have medicines they have got some nice drinks here which they're trying to give to Lazarus but perhaps he's too ill to even to have those but they didn't have doctors they didn't have hospitals and nurses and they didn't have special machines to help us know what's wrong with us we are very very thankful to God that today there are doctors and nurses and hospitals that can help us and so Lazarus was sick Mary and Martha were really sad about this. This was the brother that they loved and they wanted him to get better. But the people would come and visit too from Bethany and they would come and they would see Lazarus. Is he any better, they would say. And Mary and Martha said, no, he wasn't. One day they were really, really worried. Lazarus was really, really ill and he wasn't getting any better. And the girls didn't know what to do. What should we do? If only Jesus was here, they said. And so they wrote a letter. Let's have a look at what they said. Here's the letter perhaps they wrote. And it says, Dear Jesus, the one you love is sick. And it's signed Mary and Martha. They didn't put a stamp on it because it wasn't like that in those days, but they would have folded it up and they would have given it to somebody who would have taken it on a journey. And so it left their house in Bethany and it travelled and travelled and travelled until it got to Jesus. Mary and Martha were waiting at home. When would Jesus get that letter? When would Jesus come? They thought about it and then they found a knock on the door. They heard it. Was that Jesus? And they were so excited. If only Jesus came, he would make Lazarus well. When they opened the door, it wasn't Jesus. They were pleased to see their friends, but it wasn't Jesus. And Jesus didn't come. And one day, something really sad happened. And the Bible tells us that Lazarus died. Now, I want to talk to you very carefully about that. And I hope you're going to listen really carefully. Now, I have something here that I want you to see. Can you see my super clever glove here? Now, look at this. It can scrunch up tight all its fingers, or it can open them really wide. It can wiggle them. It can scrunch up a ball of paper. Maybe it can even catch it. Wow, what a clever glove. I've got its pair here, its other half of its glove. Can you see here? doesn't seem to be moving, doesn't seem to be scrunching up its fingers. Perhaps if I give it a ball of paper, it might do something. Come on, wiggle. Why is this glove not moving? And why is this glove so super clever? The difference is this glove has something inside it. It has my hand, and I'm sure you all guessed that. So look. This glove now can't do anything. It was my hand all the time. And that's just like our bodies. When God made us, he made us with our bodies so you can see us, which is the bit that you can see of us. And inside of us, do you remember how God breathed into Adam? God breathed in a soul. And that's the part you can never see. So each of us has got a body that we can see. And inside the real us is our soul, that although we can't see, is there for each of us, for me and for all of you. 
So when Lazarus died, God called his soul away from him and then his body couldn't work anymore. His body stopped working, just like that glove stopped working when I took my hand out of it. And so Mary and Martha buried Lazarus's body in a tomb, which was like a cave with a big stone in front of it. But Lazarus, the real Lazarus, his soul, you couldn't see him. He's no longer on earth. but He'd gone to meet God. And that's really important to remember that. So when Lazarus met God, if Lazarus loved God, which he did, and obeyed God and wanted to know more about Jesus every day and wanted to follow Jesus, then he could stay with God in a place called heaven. But if we reject God, that means we don't want God in our lives, then when we meet God, God will take us to a place where he isn't. And that's really sad. But we don't need to be afraid of that because if we all trust in Jesus and say sorry for our sins, we can all go and live with him in heaven. So Mary and Martha, now we're really sad. Let's show you the next picture. Here they are, Mary and Martha. They're at home, but look, I said they had lots of friends and the friends have come to visit them and to be with them. They are comforted because their friends are there, but they still feel very sad. And they're saying, it's too late. Lazarus has died and they are very sad. So why did Jesus not come? Did Jesus not love Lazarus or Mary or Martha? We know from the Bible that that's not true. Jesus really did love Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Perhaps he didn't get the letter, but the Bible tells us he did get the letter. Hmm, why didn't he come? Jesus, the Bible tells us very clearly, waited two more days before he started on his travels to visit the place, Bethany, where Mary and Martha lived. He knew that Lazarus was dead, but he said, we will now go to Bethany to his disciples. He said, come, we are now going. And he said, I have waited those two days so that everybody can see God's glory. That means we can see more of God's power and we will say, oh, that's amazing. So Jesus did come and Mary and Martha were still in the house, but Martha heard that Jesus was coming to Bethany. So Martha got up quickly and went and met Jesus. She said, Jesus, you've come. But if you'd come earlier, Lazarus wouldn't have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask for from God, he will give you. <gasps> that was amazing. That meant Martha still was trusting Jesus. She knew that Jesus would do everything right. Mary came and she too said, it is too late. But Jesus said, take me to the place where you have laid him. Take me to his tomb. Jesus could see that the ladies were really sad. And the Bible says that when he stood by the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus himself wept. Do you remember I said that sometimes we are sad? And that's okay. Jesus too was very sad when he saw how sad Mary and Martha were and all the other people that had gathered. Plus he too loved Lazarus. And then he said, roll away the stone. Do you remember I said they put that big stone in front of the cave? <gasps> Mary and Martha weren't sure about that. Why? Why roll away the stone? But Jesus said, roll away the stone. And they asked people to roll away the stone. And then Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus come out, come forth, come out of the tomb. What do you think happened? Do you think Lazarus could come out? He'd been dead now for four days. Do you think Lazarus could come out? Let's have a look at our final picture. 
what do you see there? This is Mary and Martha. And who's this? Now, when somebody died, they would wrap them in like grave clothes in a sheet. And this is Lazarus. Do you see that he's actually come out from the tomb? And Mary and Martha are saying, he's alive. Wow. How did that happen? Mary and Martha know. They know it's God's power that's done that because Lazarus is alive. Do you remember I said that when Lazarus died, his soul left his body? That soul has now been returned and Lazarus's body is working again. It's alive. Now, Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And the resurrection means bringing back to life. Lazarus was dead, he's now alive. Can you think of who else in the Bible died but then came back to life again? Can you remember? It's Jesus, isn't it? Do you remember he died on the cross? He was put in the ground in the tomb for three days and then, wow, he rose from the dead as well. So Jesus is proving that he is stronger than death and he says I am the resurrection and the life it doesn't mean just the life we're living here it means life forever and when our souls leave our bodies do you remember I said we go to meet God he will then give us life forevermore and then it depends on whether we love Jesus as whether we get life forevermore away from Jesus or as we all pray that it will be for all of us we will live forever with Jesus now that really is amazing and we can see God's power and God's glory here and we say God you are really amazing so that's what it means to be the resurrection and the life and that gives us real hope even though we're sad when people in our families die, we will meet everybody again at the end of our lives. Now, we're going to pray and then I've got some, one more thing to show you for today. Let's put our hands together and be quiet. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this story of Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Thank you that they all loved you and trusted you, even when they didn't understand. And Lord, we pray that we would all come to know and love you. And Lord, give us all that true life in Jesus that we can come and live with you in heaven forever. Please be with us all this week. It's not an easy time at the moment. Some of us can't go to school and we don't see our friends and our family much. But we thank you that you have promised to always be with us. And we thank you for that. Amen. Now, the craft for today is to be gardeners and I want to show you what will happen. So I've got two things here to show you. Now the first one is to grow some cress seed and I suggested you planted it in an eggshell and look how my cress seed has grown. It's grown amazingly in just a few days. I'm going to leave this to grow a bit more. Can you see I've even drawn a little face on the eggshell and this is now looking like it's hair. So when it's grown a bit more, I'm going to cook another egg and make an egg and cress sandwich. So have fun sowing your cress. And the other thing you need to grow is some sunflower seeds. Now the sunflower seeds, they just don't look very much. Can you see that one? It looks really, really dead, doesn't it? It's not going to do anything. But I planted two in here. And can you see what's happened? They are growing so tall. Now inside there, when they started to shoot, they actually had the seed covering over their leaves. Now those are both popped off now because those leaves are growing really big and tall. So I would like you to grow your seeds, see how tall your sunflowers are, when they grow a bit taller, they're going to need to go in a bigger pot and then put them out in the garden later on in the year. 
and then send us some photos with how tall your sunflowers grow. Hope you have a really good week everyone and see you next week. Bye!